tuning in to the series of videos that I'm doing with respect to the Tower Garden by Juice Plus. What my intention is here to do is to explain to you more or less the setup that's required, everything from the seedlings up to the assembly of the Tower Garden itself, and then all the stages of growth that incur from there. And to begin, the first stage of the Tower Garden setup is actually setting up the process for germination for the seeds. Now, the recommendations that they make, or the instructions, are to utilize 20 milliliters of both tower tonics that come with a tower into a liquid water solution of 3.785 liters, which is one gallon. Since I don't have any means of measuring gallons, I'm just using the liter conversion. So as you've seen, this is Tower Garden Tonic A, and this is Tonic B. So you're going to be taking 20 milliliters of each of these into the water solution. Now they also recommend that you don't use any water that's got chlorine in it. So if you wanted to use tap water, you could mitigate that by having a bucket full of water and allowing the chlorine to dissipate as it will over time. But uh, what my preference is personally at this time, uh, while I haven't had access to spring water as of late, otherwise that would be my first choice. I'm using reverse osmosis water because it's clear, there's nothing in it and that way it's really going to, I think, just take on the minerals solutions from the tower tonics without anything else being in the mix such as fluoride which is also in the city tap water. So the first step thing is I'm actually going to use only half of that amount because the recommendation is that with the initial rock wool that comes with the tower garden needs to be soaked in water with a little bit of that solution but you don't need that much water to do it so my process is this I'm going to be using just a glass jug of water like this I filled it with half of the amount that they say for the mixture so which is 1.9 liters and that's enough for what I need in order to soak the rock wool now the rock wool cubes, they come in the tray that comes with the tower garden and they look like this. They're relatively felt-like in texture and there's 20 of them that come. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to soak these in that water with 10 milliliters each of the solutions A and B. Again, I'm doing half the amount. And this has to soak, they recommend it for 30 minutes. I'll probably do 30 minutes to an hour. It doesn't, uh, just to give it a little bit of extra time if necessary. And while that process is going to be initiated, we'll follow up and uh, I'll show you what that looks like afterwards. Okay, so now we have the rock wool soaking in the water. It has a solution in here and the instructions do recommend that you wear gloves for protection. So in case you contact um, the tarotonic liquid directly. And now this is going to be sitting here for just a bit over half an hour. And while that's going on, I'm just going to talk a little bit about the seeds that I'm using. You'll notice that with the starter package of the tower, uh, tower Garden that it comes with these seeds. There's five of them. There is the cucumbers, there's two types of tomatoes, there's gourmet lettuce as well as sweet basil. And these ones are made, supplied by a company called Organic Meadows from the United, United States. And I'm going to try these guys out. I've been told that these go back three generations, so I'm not sure how organic or not they are but I am going to use these guys and test them out. The, what I'm going to be using for the rest of my selection are from a company called Urban Harvest which is uh, done here in Canada and they actually sell them these things in a number of places in uh, health food stores, also in farmers markets, uh, some in Toronto and that would be these guys here. So this is their packaging. And these are the seeds that I'm going to be using for the rest. So I'm going to be doing some red Russian kale, wild arugula, stinging nettle, or another, a couple of varieties of cucumber actually. I do want to do a lot of cucumbers in my tower garden because I do juicing on a daily basis. And using something like celery or cucumber as a base for juices is uh, a lot of 
a lot of supply and to buy these specific vegetables organically, uh, grown vegetables in, in grocery stores, it, the money is really going to add up. A lot of times it's like $4 just for an organic cucumber and personally for me that's $4 a day just for that is really expensive. So I'm actually really looking forward to being able to sprout the, these cucumbers so that I can use them for my juicing as well as the leafy greens of course. Edible flower mix which I'm looking forward to because I only a handful of times I've actually consumed flowers and they, they're pretty tasty actually. It's a surprise little treat. So I do want to grow these guys and be able to add them to my salads and all sorts of whatever wacky things I make. And okra is another one I'm going to do. It's probably going to be a little tricky to grow because it, these things grow up pretty tall and I just, I've never actually seen an okra plant. I only saw some videos of it, but I'm really looking forward to seeing how that works out. So these guys are going to be inserted into the rock holes, which I'll demonstrate next in terms of how many seeds need to go within each of the little holes and what determination factors you use to decide on that. So, we'll check in on that next. Okay, so, next step here. We now have our growing tray, and you may or may not notice that there is about a one quarter inch of height of water, and it's actually water that I used from the solution that we created earlier. And what this is going to do is going to allow for a consistent feed of water to hydrate the cubes and allow that moisture that will help with the germination process. Now, every morning, we have to add at about, just if necessary, add enough so that we have about a quarter inch again, always here for during the entire process of the germination. And uh, Tower Garden also suggests that every other day, that instead of just adding regular water, we add water with the tower tonic solutions. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to keep this original solution that I created and every other day I'll pour a little bit of this in here and uh, the other days I'll just simply add in some regular water. So now what I've done to make this a little easier for me is I created a little chart so that I can write down what I'm putting in each slot because you may not always recognize what you're sprouting. So it's definitely good to track that. And I'm going to begin by putting these guys in. And also just to make it easier, on the packages I wrote down the approximate number of seeds that are appropriate to put in each of the rock wool cubes. So we'll go from there and uh, there is a general guideline for this. With larger seeds, usually you're going about from one to two seeds in the holes. Now, if you're getting seeds that are a lot smaller, like for herbs, then you can go up to six seeds. And if they're really, really tiny, which I have something here, I'm probably going to go even a little bit more than that. So I'm going to begin this process. And the first one I'm going to do, actually, is I'm going to put in these uh, green peas because they're not from any specific special place. I just actually bought these at Whole Foods in the bulk section. And I had some here. I just thought I'd try this out. So I'm going to actually begin with the green peas. And I'm putting in two in that slot. And because some of these seeds tend to be really small as well, I found it might be helpful to have a little clear scoopy thing or a spoon that you can actually pour them in with. And the next one I'm doing here is chives, and chives is a good number to be three or four. So I'm going to just try to get out about three or four for that. And I'm going to put those in the next rock wall. Okay, so green peas. chives and I'm also going to list how many seeds I put at each just as just in case and I want to do any future experimentations then I have a base of a measurement from what I did before which I think is one of the benefits of recording the this progress so I can really test the tower garden to its limits and uh, see what it's really capable of now I'm just going to continue along with all of these and I'll probably fast track this part and uh, we'll see at the other end of this. Alright, now 
I put in all the seeds, I've labeled everything, and the next step of this process is to add the vermiculite on top of each hole. Now the ones that have the smaller amount of seeds, they don't want a lot of vermiculite on top, just a little bit to cover it. And the ones that have bigger seeds, they can use a little bit more to cover the opening. So this probably easier to use some kind of tweezer system just to put a little bit of vermiculite over the holes. Just enough to cover it. Put a bit less than this one because the seeds are smaller. And I'm going to do this for the remainder of the rock walls. So now I've covered all of the rock walls with the vermiculite. And you'll also notice, just as another point, that I actually chose to cut the, or to break the sections of the rock wall squares because I anticipate that will make it easier to separate them as a whole later on once the sprouts have actually grown a bit. And the next step is to take, I'm taking a little bit of clean water and what I'm doing is I'm just going to take a little bit and put it on top of each of the rock walls so that the vermiculate also moistens a little bit. And that's the next step in this. Just like that. Pretty simple. And that's the last one. So now that the Rockwell cubes are completely ready, the next thing to do is just to let this germination process happen. Now, in warm weather, the tray can be placed outside in a semi-shaded area and over the couple of days you can observe the growth. If it's in cooler weather, then it's a better idea to place a tray inside and by a sunny window. Now, the weather over here has been very fluctuating, so even just as a precaution, I feel that the first day or two at the very least, I can have this by a window and allow the germination to start that way. Also remember, you want to save your water solution so that we prepared earlier this way every two days you're gonna put in some of this instead of just plain old water over here to maintain the moisture level of the container another point is you do not want to close the container as per the instructions for the tower garden setup and so you'll just leave it open like this and we'll check back on the progress in a few days and you'll see how things have gone